Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jeb Smith, Coldwell Banker Residential Brokerage here in Huntington Beach. And today we're gonna to do a little video on homeowners associations. What is a homeowners association? Are they good? Are they bad? But more importantly, what you should pay attention to as a buyer if you're buying into a community that has a homeowners association. So let's start at, at the very beginning. Let's talk about the definition. What is a homeowners association? Essentially, it's a, a, a group of individuals or a, a, a committee, if you will, um, that basically is responsible for making and enforcing the rules of a community. Uh, generally, it, it consists of a board of directors and that board of directors is voted on by the community. Um, so those people have been voted into office or into that board, so to speak. And then that board makes rules and also enforces them on behalf of the community as a whole. So a homeowners association generally has something called CCNRs, uh, which are the the, um, the covenants and, and uh, you know, regulations of the community. And then there's also uh, rules and regulations that are also enforced within that community. So the CCNRs are generally created when the community is founded. Um, and then the rules and regulations can be changed over time, et cetera. CCNRs can also be changed, but, you know, that is a, a larger process. Um, and, and keep in mind, you know, while the board of directors makes and enforces rules, Sometimes the rules have to be approved by the entire community before they can actually be enforced or approved um, to be acted on. So that's kind of, you know, gives you a general idea of what a homeowners association is. Um, and while the video isn't really to talk about whether HOAs are good or bad, um, everybody's gonna have their opinion on them. I am personally in favor of them. I live in a community that has a homeowners association. I am appreciative of that for the very fact that they, they're, they enforce the rules, right? There are rules in the community, which is nice to have uh, because, you know, in Huntington Beach, for example, you know, you can, if, if it's a community that, that doesn't have an HOA, um, you can, you know, work on your car in the driveway and leave it on blocks and, and paint your house any color and, and so on and so forth. And while that's cool to some, you know, I prefer, um, you know, a much cleaner, um, uh, slate, if you will. I mean, slate's probably it, definitely not the right word, but you know, I, I, presentation of a house, curb appeal, what have you. I, I prefer everything to not look exactly the same, but you know, to look nice and, and be manicured. And 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 an HOA is is good at enforcing and keeping those rules because when you don't abide by them um, per se, then you know there are fines and and uh, things associated with it. Uh, and, and so that's why I'm a fan of HOAs. Um, the downside is obviously. There are fees associated with it, et cetera. But, you know, I'm a big fan. And so today we're actually going to talk about, you know, buying into an association. What should you pay attention to, you know, when, when you're looking at buying, you know, a condo, a house, whatever it is that has an actual homeowners association. And, you know, for me, you know, outside of fee, so HOA fee is, is probably going to be one of the uh, most important things for most people, right? Because it's a fee that they're going to pay every month. So it's something they're going to pay attention to. So while the fee is, is extremely important, things to keep in mind with that fee, right? What does that HOA fee cover? Um, so not only should you be aware of, of how much that fee is per month, but what does it actually cover? Uh, you know, does it cover the exterior of the building? Does it cover the roof? Does it cover paint? Um, does it cover any insurance? Is it only the common area? Um, are there amenities in the community? Are there pools? Are there tennis courts, volleyball courts, any of that stuff? So what is that HOA fee that you pay for every month? What does it go towards? Um, and then in that same boat, you know, keep in mind, like when you look at an HOA fee, have your agent, whoever it is, go back and look at the last five, 10 years of that, of that community and see what the HOA was, the fee was for that period of time. Has it gone up every single month uh, or every year rather? Um, generally, HOA fees are set for the year. So, you know, has that fee gone up every year? Has it been maintained for a couple of years? Has, you know, has it never gone up? Those are things to pay attention to, right? Because, you know, if it's gone up every year, chances are it's gonna to continue to go up every year. Um, if it's remained stable for some time, you know, then again, it's, it's kind of a, you know, looking at the history of the fee is gonna give you an idea of where it's gonna go in the future, at least in my opinion. So make sure, you know, when you're paying attention to the fee, how much it is and what it covers, where has it been in the past? Um, you know, really, really pay attention to that. Secondly, 
look at the financials. You know, you're going to get a bundle of documents when you when you buy a property. A large packet of CCNRs, rules and regulations, financial statements. Financial statements are really important because they, you know, give you an idea of how well funded the community is. And this is really, really important, right? Because this kind of goes back to what I mentioned a moment ago about knowing where the HOA fees have been to give you an idea of where they're going, right? So if you could see how funded, well-funded a community is, then you'll have an idea of where to go in the future. Is there money in reserves for, for the different uh, projects that need to take place in the future? Because what happens is when you buy into these uh, communities that have HOAs and they're not well-funded, um, then there's assessments. When things have to be done, when, when the buildings need to be painted, the roofs need to be done, there's assessments, which means that, you know, the entire community gets hit with a fee that they're responsible for paying on top of that HOA fee uh, because the community didn't have enough money in reserves in order to to uh, to do those improvements. So when you have a well-funded community, there's you know money being put away in reserves in these different categories so that when things come up, um, you know there's enough money in that budget to take care of them. Um, and then, you know, again, along those same lines, make sure you're paying attention to the minutes, right? So the minutes in the community are generally done, um, they recap what happens at board meetings. Um, and when you buy into an association, you get, you know, the last six months, last year of the actual minutes. Read through those minutes, right? Because those minutes are gonna uh, go over what has been talked about in board meetings. So any future assessments that may be coming up, um, a change in HOA fees that may be coming up, that's gonna be addressed in those minutes. And you know, when you're buying into these communities, you get a lot of paperwork. So there's a ton of paperwork, and a lot of people just skip over these documents. They sign off on them, they don't review them, and then, Come to find out, there's assessments uh, that are happening. There's, you know, the the association's low on their on their budget or in reserves, and then you end up um, having to 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 pay for that um, when the community isn't well funded. So, you know, make sure you're paying attention to these documents uh, initially, so that you're not getting hit with some, um, you know, crazy fees, uh, if you will, down the road. Um, and lastly, with an association, make sure that you're looking at things in the rules and regulations that may apply to you, um, like pet policy. You know, if you have multiple pets, if you have large dogs, anything like that, make sure that when you're reviewing HOA docs that you're looking at those things that pertain to you, um, like pets, right? Because you want you don't want to buy into a community um, and not having reviewed that and find out that they only allow one large dog or Two, two dogs total and you have five or, or whatever. So make sure when you're, when you're looking into communities that have HOAs that you're paying attention to these things um, because I see it often that people just sign off on them and not look at them and um, you know, it, it, it's a big part of the community that you're buying into if you're buying into a community that has a homeowners association. So just make sure you're reviewing this stuff, you know, know what the HOA fees cover, um, you know, know the minutes, know the financials, you review this stuff and you know, reach out to your agent. They should be able to help guide you and ask the right questions if you can't answer, you know, ask them or don't know the questions to answer. You know, chances are if they're an experienced agent, they, they know the questions to, to ask and or can get the answers to the questions that you may have um, about the, the homeowners association. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch. Um, if you have questions about HOAs, in general, comment below um, or contact me directly. I'm happy to address them either way. As always, I do appreciate you taking the time to watch and we'll see you again soon. Have a great day, bye-bye.